I'm just going to show you how to fix the Logia anemometer, which some people have had C's on them, right? Works for three to four weeks and then just stops working. There's a problem. There's a little bearing in here, which we're going to show you now. And there's two versions of it. There's one with mild steel bearings and one with stainless steel bearings and unfortunately it seems a batch of these got sent out with the mild steel bearings so areas with a moist, lot of moisture in the air that seizes up as mild steel tends to do we have 14 <coughs> screws to remove to open the unit all right we have two sitting in those two big holes so you need a nice long precision screwdriver right work on a nice area where you cannot lose your screws preferably use a magnetized screwdriver which I forgot to magnetize before this <clears throat> but it's easier, they all just fall out quite close to you and work on a nice clean surface. Right. So we've got 10 left. Right, now when you disassemble the unit, you have your reset button and that. If you open it this way, they're going to fall out. So you're now going to open the unit this way. Okay. Put this down on the table. Underneath here, you have a little simple plug which clips out. So that you can put out your way. Right. So we're dealing with our anemometer which has two little screws in the bottom there. These sometimes do and sometimes don't fall out. I just loosen them enough. And then this little unit just, you just pull and it pops out. And just leave it out your way for now right there's our little bearing tiny little bearing as you can see it's called the MR104 bearing and as I say it comes in two different versions so I'm just gonna show you how I do this I use a very good oil called ACF 50 you can use Q20 or WD40 I'm sure either one will do this just last for absolute years all we do is we give a nice squirt on that bearing it may look like a lot and then spin the anemometer and as you see you spin the anemometer it's sucking the oil into the bearing right just a few times for safety's sake, I give one tiny little squirt again. Just let it run through the bearing because below the bearing there's also a shaft. Right. And then <clears throat> we use some good old kitchen paper towel, which I roll into a very thin. Just like that just reach down in the bottom dab it around and suck up any excess oil this is a very thick oil so it's unlikely to that's perfect it's unlikely to ever drip down onto this little circuit board all right now that that's done if you look at this piece here it has two fins I'm just going to show you them. 
just there, that little that little notch and that little notch. Those slide back into those two notches there. Right? Oops. Yeah. And then you just give a nice click and you'll feel it clicks into place. Right? All we then do simply retighten those two screws. Do not over tighten, just tighten until your screwdriver stops. And then putting it back together, I'm going to cut the end off the video, so I'm not going to show you how to put 12, 14 screws back. You take this clip, just oh, sorry, trying to do this one handedly. Have to do it upside down. If you see here, just take this, bring it close enough, clip it. I've got it the wrong way around. Sorry. Just clip it back in there until it goes click. Bring your weather station top back around. Just remember, we've kept it this way up so those switches don't fall out. You simply Pop it back together and you start start putting your screws back one by one. Okay, one by one don't over tighten and don't forget those two there. And that's it, easy. And that should last you for absolutely years.